Supplemental Math Videos from Circle Christian School. Ever wonder where math came from to begin with? People saw that there were certain patterns that happened in the world around them. Those patterns lent themselves to certain reasonable restraints, which we call formulas. Sequences and series is the math of patterns. The definition of a sequence is an infinite set domain of positive integers such as first term, second term, third term, onto infinity. The terms of the sequence are the results from a given input to a sequence rule. The way we say this is a sub n, where n is the cardinal order of the term. So going down the list here, a sub 1, first term, a sub 2, second term a sub 3, third term, and so forth. A sequence rule is much like a function rule, f of x equals 2x plus 1. In this case, we're just going to say a sub n equals 2n plus 1. Are you seeing a connection here? So it happened in nature. People saw that we had 1 block, 2 block, 3 block, 4 block, Five block and the natural number sequence was probably the original sequence. After that people saw patterns in the way that numbers did things. So let's write the first four terms of each given sequence rule. The first one is a sub n equals 3n minus 2. So what we're going to do is put the cardinal order in to each one of the sequence. So we'd have the second term, third term, fourth term. And then we're just going to do the math. 3 times 1 is 3 minus 2 is 1. 3 times 2 is 6 minus 2 is 4. 9 minus 2 is something that it just escaped me. And 12 minus 2 is 10. You'll notice that what we end up here is with a difference of 3. This will be kind of important later. Going to the next one, where we have 3 plus negative 1 to a power n, we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to put the cardinal order of the term into the n here. And then we're going to go solve. So the first one is going to be 3 minus the 1 equals 2. 3 plus the 1 is going to equal the 4. 3 minus the 1 is going to equal the 2. 3 plus the 1 is going to equal the 4. And no matter how you go down in the cardinal order here, you're going to have 2, 4, 2, 2, 4. 4 or 2 not to 4? I don't know. Other patterns that happen is a thing called a factorial notation. And basically, this is the product of our cardinal order of numbers here. So basically, what we're saying is that for our first one, 1 factorial which you're going to hear me say VUPI because it's just way too hard to say factorial. So 1 VUPI equals 1. 2 VUPI equals 1 times 2 or 2. 3 VUPI is 1 times 2 times 3 equals 6 and so forth and so on. You're just going to keep going up in the order of terms. So it's kind of the product of terms uh, so if, for instance, we had 6 factorial, it would just be 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6. You can actually find it in your calculator. It can do it for you. Now what's interesting is that 0 factorial actually also equals 1 because it's all about the products. It's the first product. So therefore, it's 1. Kind of bizarre, but is as is, is. And then we can do operations with factorials. 
Um, they're a little bit different than trying to do them with regular numbers because you have to remember what they really are. So for instance, 8 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 times 7 times 8. You get the picture. And we're being divided by 2 factorial and 6 factorial, so we're saying 1 times 2 times 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6. Okay. So now we're just going to kind of do some cancellation things as we go along the way here. Uh, we can get rid of the threes, we can get rid of the fours, get rid of the five, get rid of the six. The one's just already wasted and gone. Two can go into them. And when it's all said and done, we can do 28. And if you're really, 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 really clever, you'll find a way to do that in your calculator. What's a little bit more difficult is when you have something where we are just talking in or whatever the terms can be. <clears throat> All right, and we can have the little ends here, which basically what it's saying is in math geek terms, one times two times three dot, 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 n minus 1 times the n. And if you think about it, it'll come to you. Where we have 1 times 3, I mean 1 times 2 times 3, dot, 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 n minus the 1. Which, of course, all these guys are going to go gone. It gives you n. Personally, I think it's a little bit uh, easier to look at this when you just try a couple different numbers. For instance, if I took the 5 factorial and put that over 5 minus the 1 factorial, it's just a little bit easier for me to see. I would see 5 times 4 times 5, uh, sorry, 3 times 2 times 1 over 4 times the 3 times the 2 times the 1 and of course you see that all goes and whatever we started out with so it would equal the number that you start out with and you can try a couple different case scenarios you'll still always end up with whatever you started out with summation notation it's the sum of the first so many terms in a given sequence the upper index or the number at top of the cute little sigma here, and that little e is called sigma, is the number of terms. How many terms do we want you to add together? So if it says five, we want you to take those five terms, add them together. The lower index is notifying you that you begin with a certain term. It may say n equals one. So you're gonna start with one, and work through the amount given up above. Um, it may start with the third term, which means you're going to start with three and then do the number given up above. The tricky one is when it says n equals zero. So for instance, if the number up top was five, the number of terms just don't count until you get to one. So you have to put a zero in and then you have to put in one, two, three, four, and five. The sequence rule is the math rule that they give you to go and do. So let's try a couple. So the first one tells us that we're gonna work up to the fifth term and we're gonna start with the first one. So I do a bit of an assembly line here. Three, 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 and the three. Now we're going to plug things in. So um, it says start with the first term and work up to five. Two, three, four, and five. Which is going to give us three, six, nine, twelve, five. We're going to add those together. So nine and nine is eighteen. Eighteen and twelve is thirty. Bring out my fifteen there. Thirty plus fifteen is forty-five. 
so it equals 45. All right, the next one, again, you got to be a little careful. It says, I want to work up to the sixth one, but we're starting at three. So I'm going to go one plus, going to take the K away, and one plus, take the K away, and one plus, take the K away. Ah, now see, this is a little bit different because we're going to start with three. That's what it says to do, start with three, but we got to work through six. Four, five, us. Ah, I see I need another one. So one plus the six here. Then we're going to do the math. Okay, so nine plus one is 10. 16 plus one is 17. 25 and one is 26. 36 and one is 37. Uh, get my handy dandy little cap. Nah, try some mental math. Uh, 14, 6 is 0. Uh, carry the 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 3, 90. And there we have the sum. Now, don't you feel smart? It's all about the patterns. It's all about where you're going to begin. What are you going to end with? Are you going to add them together? What kind of pattern does it make?